Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the June 2021 um, International A-Level paper from Cambridge 9709. This is paper one, variant one, pure mathematics. And we have here a graph which shows, um, or part of the graph of y equals a times tan of x minus b inside that bracket plus c. So we want to find the values of a, b, and c, given that b is between 0 and pi. Um, so there's a transformation taking place here between the curve of y equals tan x, and it, it's become, you know, y equals a times tan of x minus b plus c. Now, with the tan curve, it's slightly more... Uh, thinking involved than the cosine curve and the sine curve because the sine curve and cosine curve in terms of the um, the vertical type of transformations it's a lot easier to think of because you have a maximum and a minimum you know the curve goes like this and you can work out for example from the amplitude the value of a a would be half of the amplitude half of the you know um, distance between the top and the bottom it's always like that but for the tan curve the amplitude is infinite it goes up forever goes down forever so you cannot um you know work it out as simply as a sine and cosine curve right but what we can work out quite simply in this case is the horizontal shift that's taken place okay so we could do that by looking at for example the asymptotes now the asymptotes on the tan curve we know are uh, pi over two and minus pi over 2 and so on and 3 pi over 2 uh, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 okay so we can see that here if you if you can if you carry on this graph it looks like the asymptote has moved to 3 pi over 4 so the asymptote has now become 3 pi over 4 in our in this curve so the asymptote has shifted okay from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 4 so that's a shift of pi over 4 to the right Okay, to the right, and um, we can say that this b must equal pi over 4. So we can work out b quite easily. The horizontal transformation, the asymptote has moved, you know, pi over 4 to the right. Okay, and from there then we can calculate, um, think about the, the other transformations, the, the vertical ones, which are more kind of uh, difficult in this particular case because we don't have like the maximum and minimums. So let's concentrate, for example, on a point like this okay this point which is where you can say the point of inflection on the tan curve it would be somewhere it would be over here it goes through zero zero that's where the curve turns on the normal tan curve if you if you have the tan curve it kind of has this change of curvature at the origin so we can see what's happened here it shifted a quarter pi to the right as we can see okay and then it's it's been moved up by one unit. Okay, so what happens in this transformation is first of all you have the shift to the right as we had pi over four. Okay, and then it's multiplied by a. Now this point when you multiply it by a won't change because its coordinates is a quarter zero. When you multiply it by a, it's going to stay as it is. So that. You know, for for that that rules us finding out what a is. But I know then after that it's been it's been raised by one unit. So that means c must be equal to one, because at the end it was raised by one unit. So this c represents a vertical translation of one unit. Okay, because it's outside of the function. So we know that c must equal one. All right. As for a, what we're going to do is I'm going to choose another point that would have been on this curve which is this point on the original curve the original curve y equals tan x goes through pi over 4 1 and minus pi over 4 minus 1 so the original curve would go something like this and go up like that so this point now has moved pi over 4 to the right okay so this point has moved pi over 4 to the right and then from here Okay, when it's now at pi over 2, 1. All right, it's been multiplied by A. 
Okay, so this has been multiplied by a, so it's a, 1 times a, and then it's been, you've added 1 to it, a plus 1. Okay, because we know that, you know, that's what happens to c is equal to 1. It's, it's, so in the end, so this point moved pi over, pi over 4 to the right. Okay, and then it was multiplied by, then it was, uh, then, then it was multiplied by something a, which we have to find. And then um, one was added to it. But where did it end up? It ended up at this point. It ended up at pi over 2, 3. It ended up at pi over 2, 3. So the a plus 1 must be the same as 3. That means if a plus 1 is equal to 3, a must be equal to 2. Okay, so we know a is equal to 2. All right? So um, that's how we can work out the values of a, b, and c. All right, so just to recap what I did there at the end, in case that's not clear to you. What I've done is, here I'll just show it again, that part. Okay, what I've done is the following. I've first of all chosen a point on the original curve of y equals tan x. This is the original curve of y equals tan x before any transformation has taken place. I know it goes to the point pi over 4, 1. We know that, that when tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1, right? And I know that it's gone over the transformation. So, so far we have y equals a tan of x minus pi over 4 and plus 1. We've, we've, did, we've deduced that this is minus, this is pi over 4 and this is 1. So, we know that this point has moved pi over 4 to the right. And then it's been multiplied by a. Okay. So, it's moved pi over 4 to the right. So, it's gone to pi over 2. Okay. And then it's its coordinate, which was 1, has been multiplied by a, and then 1 was added to it, okay? Because this, this is multiplying the y coordinate by a transformation. So you first you deal with the inside transformation. So this means you go uh, pi, translation of pi over 4 to the right. So the translation of pi over 4, 0. And then you deal with outside the function with bit mass. So you multiply the y coordinate that you have, which is at the moment 1, by a and then you add one to it so this a plus one this a plus one ends up at three because we we see that we end up at this point pi over two three okay because it's gone this way and then up to there so a plus one must equal three so a equals two all right so therefore we have a equals two and b equals pi over four and c equals one and we can check to see if our answer is correct by choosing a point on the curve that we know, um, you know, its uh, value. For example, I can choose, um, you know, pi over 4 and put it into this equation. I can put pi over 4 instead of... Um, so our equation would therefore be, let's just write the equation. It would be y equals 2 times tan of um, x minus pi over 4 plus 1. So if we put, for example, x equals pi over 4, you have tan of 0, which is 0, 0 times 2, which is 2, plus 1, which is 1, and you can see pi over 4, 1 is pointing on the, on the curve. Or we could choose pi over 2. We have uh, 2 times tan of pi over 2 minus pi. That's going to be tan of pi over 4, which is 1. So 2 times 1 plus 1 is going to give you 3. That's exactly where we are. We can choose any points that we want, and we can uh, you know, determine... Um, that we have got the right equation. Okay, I could choose even a point out here somewhere. Okay, so for example, I could choose 3 pi over 2. We should get from that 3. So put 3 pi over 2 instead of x. Okay, and you put that in the calculator, it will give you 3 as your output. So we can be sure that we've done the right thing. So here are the answers now. It took a bit of a time to explain the question, but for you in your thought process, it shouldn't really take that long. You know, you should realize first that the amplitude has not changed. Okay, as we can see, you know, so, sorry, not the amplitude, the period has not changed. The period has not changed in terms of its, you know, it's, it's repeating every pi. And we can see that from the actual original equation that it's, it's 1 times x. So the, you know, the, it's going to not be stretched horizontally. So it'll be the same, you know, distance between the asymptotes of pi or whatever. But it's been shifted by b units to the right. So we can see that from the asymptote that's shifted Okay, pi over 4 units, so b must be pi over 4. And for c, we can't see the amplitude from, you know, like, you know, the minimums and maximums because it's, it's infinite range. 
so we choose a point to try and firm find out what um, you know the the A and the C are. Okay, so that's what I did. First, I chose origin. I went to going to the right by pi over four, then multiplying the y coordinate by A doesn't help us here because it's on the origin, but adding one it makes us realize that that must be one. And then choose another point. Okay, that's moved pi over four to the right. And then multiplied by a, we don't know what that is, but then you add one. So it's going to be one times a plus one. Okay, and that, that must give you three, right? Because the coordinate is one at the moment, multiplied by a, and then added one gives you three. So you can work out that a must be two. And there we have the answer to that question. I hope that was clear. All right. In fact, you know, this type of question, you don't really have to show any steps at all. You can just write down and say, state the values of a, b, and c. So you don't really have to really show any working or anything. And your understanding of the uh, curves all right, um, should be enough for you. But um, I just wrote some stuff down to make you understand um, how to deal with this such a question. So other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the, the topic of uh, transformations of graphs um, over here. And I'll also mention um, a playlist here for trig graphs. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.